I have been lifting since 1988. I was a well-known powerlifter, ranked number one in the world for many years, and I was known as a, as a tactician. Like people would use my examples of my lifts is like this is what it should look like. And then I started getting injuries, one after another, and I could be down here, and then over here, and then over here, and then it just kept happening. This doesn't make sense. You know, I'm going to, to my orthopedic surgeon, I'm going to my physical therapist, I'm going to my chiro, and they're all working on a problem and telling me, you know, in isolation what's happening, how we're gonna fix it. There's gotta be a reason. And finally, found a group of people or a person that started making other introductions for me. I started to learn to see but also know specifically, how can I pull those levers at times that we wouldn't necessarily anticipate being able to do it? In the period of time when we can deliver the most results, which is when we have that flow, getting adaptation, driving the change, what does this mean? The process of figuring those things out. And that took a number of years, seeing that vision, starting to bring other people into it and develop and flush that out. This ostentatious vision of being able to help others be able to, to do this. Much of this, at this point, has become ubiquitous within the strength training realm. You hear so many people talking about these concepts that weren't out there in the strength world being discussed whatsoever. It's really amazing to see that. So many people now are speaking, why are you here? What can we add since there's so many people saying some of the same things? Even when I look around, I, I said I should take it as a compliment. Like, so much of these discussions and movements and drills and theories are, are out there in, in the world being talked about, but at the same time, when you look at the people that are still out there in the large, the depth of knowledge and really understanding the nuance of bracing and foot mechanics and how that relates to squatting heavy, picking things up, parroting the same language, parroting the things that are, that are being said without the depth of understanding that you guys are gonna get this weekend how this can relate to things through the entire body. And again, those levers, the systematic approach. How do we get people as fast as possible to this point where we can get adaptation from good movement? And how can we, wherever possible, stay in that moment and not have to regress? You can see a lot of our equipment and things in here. It's a big thing that we want to attack, but we want to bring good uh, in the world in the way that we know how. Live better through strength become more resilient, to challenge ourselves, but to do so in ways that allow us to adapt. The ability to rapidly accommodate variability of an individual's ability restrictions, training needs, but forcing everybody to, to work around and with stuff doesn't necessarily fit all the shapes and sizes and functions of our body. The goal is to build a, a cohesive ecosystem that is encompassing the entirety of that continuum of care, but we're managing and controlling that and providing the best environment. People working with the same language, the same philosophies, the same goal, and the tools that are built to, to facilitate that as well. Everything is uh, not in isolation. It's all designed to work together on the same body, the same system.